Hey. Uh, so I made a video yesterday um, that referenced this video that I'm making now. <laughs> I had a emotional experience yesterday. Um, I was talking about how I was feeling very down um, and not really knowing, uh, I don't know, kind of what some of my uh, motivations or meanings or something in, in what I'm doing was. And I've been feeling like this for a while. I have some very low lows. Um, and I also have some good highs, so um, it's not all down. But um, fairly recently, I was contacted by the Supa Jai Gym, which is in Australia, and um, they do a lot of great work focusing on um, mental health and suicide prevention. And so um, I was actually inspired by this contact. Uh, they're going to have a suicide prevention show um, I think it's called the Kwandamuka Cup. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, but it's something that uh, I feel very nervous making this video because I feel like there's a lot that I want to say. And so I keep reminding myself that I don't have to say everything in this video. <laughs> like the point of this video is actually to open up the discussion about um, suicide prevention, depression, um, severe inner critic and difficulties that I think that um, a lot of people who are drawn to Muay Thai experience, uh, maybe we're drawn to Muay Thai because of it, um, but it's definitely one of these things where like this thing that you suffer for, this thing that um, kind of feeds you and drives you and motivates you also tears you apart. And I think that life is kind of like that. Um, so when I made this video yesterday, I was talking about a phone call I had gotten from Ajahn Pramot uh, that really affected me. And um, in my like kind of grappling for meaning or whatever, I kind of got this like cosmic answer in this phone call from uh, Ajahn Pramot. You can watch that video. We'll link it in this uh, video's description. But I got a lot of responses, actually a lot from men, um, who uh, kind of said that they're struggling a lot all the time also. Mostly women were saying thank you for sharing your experience, which I think from women, um, the idea of sharing these struggles is the hard part. Um, and I think that the fact that a lot of men responded, they, they actually posted in comments, um, just means that a lot of people go through this. And so that's one of the reasons making this video is just to open up the discussion, to put it on the table, because um, it needs to be discussed a lot more. Um, the struggles and the difficulties that all of us face, whether we're fighters or not, um, a lot of the hardest fights are not in the ring at all. Um, one of the things that uh, Supa Jai, when they contacted me, they link together mental health and suicide prevention as like these two things that they kind of put together. Um, something that I've worked very hard on and kind of came a little bit late to in terms of my um, Muay Thai and as a fighter experience was mental health, like mental toughness, mental training, this kind of thing. Um, that's taken a lot of forms for me <laughs> over the years that I've become more serious about it. Um, there are lots of ways to uh, develop your mental toughness, lots of ways to focus on your mental training and things like this. But I think that one of the things that I've come to find um, is actually a, a failure in the way that we talk about mental toughness um, is that in the word toughness, like in the way that we even talk about it, um, in the kind of connotation of a lot of the words that we use for this subject, it implies this kind of like um, harshness or like uh, Toughness is very hard and strong and kind of like, uh, you know, like, get up, you pussy, <laughs> like this kind of thing that um, some people are motivated, motivated by that. But I think that in the long run, you're not motivated by that in the long run. You can use that short term. You can use that in the moment kind of thing. But I think that this kind of like you have to be tough. You have to push through it. You have to be so harsh um, for me has become less and less helpful and less and less indicative of true resilience. I've found for me in what I've kind of worked on and come to realize in my own mental training and my own 
resilience, mental toughness, this kind of thing, is actually that a supple mind, not a hard mind, is far more durable. Um, I was talking to my husband about the three little pigs <laughs> and how, like, uh, you know, if you look at that story from the outside of it, you know, everyone is looking for the house made of brick because it's sturdy, it's solid, nothing's getting in, it's kind of impenetrable. And that um, this is such a fallacy, especially in the idea of being a fighter or being someone who is fighting. I don't mean you have to be in the ring. I think that there are fighters who never enter the ring. Um, that if you have a house of brick, this impenetrable thing, when the wolf is on the inside, which is what your mind is, it's not so safe anymore. It fucking sucks. Like you, you don't want the house of brick when your wolf is on the inside. And I think um, that's something that we really struggle to talk about is that we really are um, dangerous to ourselves in a lot of ways. Um, I've been asked in interviews before who was my toughest opponent or what was my toughest fight. And I know that people want me to answer something that's like one of my fights where I got so many stitches or, you know, was so bloody or my opponent outweighed me by 30 pounds. You know, um, I have a lot of those fights. But often when I'm asked this question, I kind of draw a blank, um, partially because all fights are hard. Um, there really aren't easy ones. But in terms of like my toughest fighter, my toughest opponent, it's not the woman in the ring with me. It's the crippling anxiety, and like mental strain and depression um, and thoughts that come with you. Those are the toughest opponent and they're with you all the time. They're with you getting into the ring and they're with you when you come out of the ring and that is my toughest opponent and it's all the time. So, you know, who's my toughest fight out of 267 fights it's me because I'm always there and it's like the comparison between what my mind is doing to me in the ring versus what my opponent could potentially do to me in the ring is like not on par at all um, and I think that that's something that we need to talk about uh, both as fighters who are struggling with it and fighters who are not necessarily fighting like you don't have to fight in the ring to be struggling with these things. Um, I was really moved. Uh, I was telling Kevin about this the other day that we have this thing um, that in uh, America, we call it inspiration porn, <laughs> which is, uh, it's, it's not a flattering term for it, but it's basically these videos of someone who, you know, is in a wheelchair and they like pop it over and do like 20 push-ups or something and it's meant to inspire able-bodied people which is kind of why I have a problem with it is that it's just kind of put into these like highlight reels um, rather than actually looking into the uh, story behind them and really you're looking at this like physical feat but really the the mental accomplishment that that person had to go through in order to be able to do that physical thing is to me way more impressive but something about um depression, something about suicidal thoughts, something about the kind of struggles that a lot of people are dealing with um, when it's not a physical issue, you cannot make inspiration porn from depression. <laughs> you can't make it from suicidal thoughts. You can't make it from whatever people are struggling with while they're just trying to get out of bed, just trying to get to the gym. That's not a video. It's not visible. So uh, people struggle with um, invisible illnesses, people struggle with mental difficulties, with serious, serious, serious hindrances, and you can't see it, uh, and you can't make like an inspiring video out of that. Um, and so I think that people aren't really taking credit where it's due for what kind of tenacity, what kind of resilience it takes just to get to the gym, just to be there. Uh, someone who's just hitting the bag looking like it's a regular day hitting the bag can be accomplishing something in that moment that's as incredible as, uh, you know, an, an amputee running a marathon or something. It takes the same kind of, like, mental intensity. Um, so I'm trying to be honest about this. I'm trying to be more open about this. Uh, talking about 
my own depression, my own struggles, uh, suicidal thoughts, things like this. Um, because I think in acknowledging it and talking about it, it just opens up the possibility for people to acknowledge it in themselves, um, take credit for the effort that it requires, things like this. Um, in the way that I'm saying that like mental toughness, like true mental toughness and resilience is not actually like brick walls, but is supple. Um, something that I said in this video yesterday and something that I've come to realize in my own mental training and mental toughness is that this like resilience and toughness being supple, that the most amazing quality of fighters that I've met is not beast mode. <laughs> like, I know people are motivated by this and I know that people are, uh, you know, able to accomplish things in their beast modes and things like this. I'm not one of these people and it's okay if you're not one of those people as well. To me, one of the most incredible qualities of the fighters, the legends of Muay Thai, who are some of the scariest men in the ring, my God. Um, one of the most salient qualities that I've come across in most of these men is actually kindness. These fighters of the golden age, these absolute legends of the sport, scary, scary, scary men in the ring are all incredibly kind. They are so, so kind and it is not at odds with who they are in the ring. It's not a Jekyll and Hyde situation. Like they are both of those things in a very, very strong way. Um, so I actually reached out to um, a lot of the legends who I've met and become friends with uh, over the years of building the Muay Thai library and um, told them about this fight card that's coming up, this uh, Kwandamuka Cup uh, in Australia that's uh, raising awareness um, and maybe raising funds for suicide prevention. And uh, in Thai, there's uh, something that you say to people, both when they're getting ready to fight, but also when they're going through a hard time. So if someone is really struggling in their life, they're um, uh, struggling with family, struggling with money, uh, feeling defeated, um, it's the same thing you say to someone who's getting ready to go into a fight. And there, there are two things. One is, uh, to say that you encourage someone is ben gamlang jai hai, means like I'm encouraging you. Um, sometimes when you don't speak a language as your native language, you kind of see things in it coming to it as your second language that people who uh, learn it as a native speaker don't necessarily see. And something that I see in this ben gamlang jai hai that I really like is that um, Thai doesn't conjugate verbs. Like there's not like a future tense and past tense. There's a way of speaking that shows that something is in the future, shows that something is in the past, or shows that something's in the present. One way to make something currently happening, like I am currently walking to the store, I am currently training, um, is gamlang. Gamlang means to be like presently doing something. And that's a piece that's in this encouragement phrase. So, chan ben gamlang jai hai means kind of literally my heart is in a state of continuity for you. That means to offer encouragement to someone. If you're asking for encouragement, it is, I am asking for your heart to be in a state of continuity for me, which is really beautiful. I like this a lot. Uh, so that's to offer encouragement. And then uh, the second thing that they say, which again is whether you're gonna be a fighter getting in the ring or whether you're just going through something in your life that people are basically like, Keep going, it's okay, fight on, be strong. Uh, the word in Thai to fight is soup, su su. So <laughs> they're like, fight, fight, when uh, you know, you're really struggling with something. Like su su basically means like, don't give up, keep going. Um, but also when you're a fighter and you're getting in the ring to fight, su su. So um, I was shocked. I, I contacted a lot of legends. Uh, and told them about this event that's coming up and what it's for to offer encouragement to people who are feeling defeated or down, um, suicidal thoughts, things like this. Um, and I just asked them to, to give a short video of encouragement. And so many responded. I was really amazed. Um, so I am going to post that video separately so that it is just this video of all these legends offering encouragement so that you can watch it by itself anytime you need encouragement, I watch it. <laughs> I totally, 
on days when I'm really struggling, I just hit play and it's just all these legends. So, so. Um, so that will be a separate video, but that's also at the end of this video. Uh, so this is the opening, opening statement video of talking about uh, not giving up, about being a fighter even if you're not in the ring a fighter and being kind rather than hard. Um, and for me, it's much easier to be kind to other people than it is to be kind to myself. And I think there are a lot of people like that. So uh, please learn to be kind to yourself as well. Uh, and until you can do that, if you can't do that yet, which is okay, we have the greatest fighters of all time offering their support. Susu. <laughs>ขอให้ทุกคนสู้ๆนะครับผมดีใจน้อยจะเป็นกําลังใจเราต้องสู้ไปด้วยกันครับผมสวัสดีครับสู้ๆครับอย่ายอมแพ้สู้สู้ๆ